was made flesh and dwelt among us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is the most remarkable and irrepeatable miracle in all of human history that the virginity of the Blessed Virgin, her seal of her virginity, remained unbroken as she gave birth to God Almighty in the flesh. This mystery should continue to influence on us a whole series of, of convictions and thoughts and prayerful considerations that transform our souls, our minds, and our hearts. And my dear sisters, especially among you, uh, the postulant and the novices, this is a very important moment of formation for you and your path. This is where Christ meets you along the road and, and thoroughly persuades your heart for his cause. So therefore, let us continue our reflections as we try to get to obtain this intimate knowledge of the heart of Christ so that he can grant us his love and that we may commit ourselves to his service. Now the angels come into play. The master of the feast will be angry. And 30 years later, our Lord will say this parable with those who have been invited and had refused to come and that his servants should go out by the byways and the highways, compelling any and all to come in. And there in Bethlehem, many who should be there are not there. All the busy streets of Bethlehem are not there. The daughters from Persia are not there. The Roman soldiers who occupied the inn and therefore kept the Holy Family away are not there. Anyone who had an honorable coin would be in those inns and hotels. And so therefore the angels were sent to the byways and the highways, to shepherds on a quiet, lost hillside, practically in the middle of the night. These shepherds. Now as we know, from the Jewish traditions, shepherds were outcasts, according to the Jewish sentiment at the time of Jesus. They were simple folk that lost all their rights to religion since they funneled and touched too often beasts of the field. So they were forbidden, barred from entering into the religious precincts all around Palestine. And they lost all direction of societal prestige due to the constant occupation with their beasts. And the Talmud, which, is, which was a written document of the oral traditions of the Jews, this was around the second century after Christ, of what was taught by the Jewish people during the times of Christ. And the Talmud affirms that if you see a shepherd in a pit, do not bother to pull him out. Not so much to disdain these people. Who are these shepherds? They were the outcasts, the weak, the forgotten, the ones who did not get a good deal out of life. And those are the ones that the angels are sent to the highways and the byways, calling anybody you can to come, to come quickly. And so therefore the angels appear to these shepherds. Could you imagine the shepherds, the eyeballs popping out of their heads, out of the sockets, as they see all the, the heavens light up with this strange, unseen light. 
and the heavenly host, that first glory in excelsis Deo. Can you imagine not mass one, two, three, four, five, sixteen, but mass celestial is being sung. And these angels say these words, fear not, fear not. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 says, Fear is not in charity. Perfect charity casteth out fear. Because fear hath pain, and he that feareth is not perfected in charity. And so the angels had tidings of great joy to be shared with the whole people, a Savior is born today in Bethlehem. Now, St. Paul affirms that when Christ humbled himself, he is exalted. And so, therefore, it's no surprise that when our Lord and Savior is in swaddling clothes amid straw and a feeding basket for animals, this is the time that angels have to be dispatched and exalt him. Because look how low he is. Look how forgotten he is. Look how humdrum he is. Look how ordinary he looks. And therefore the angels down the road have to break out in visible exaltation. He's born, when he's born, the choirs of angels sing in triumphant glee. A warring man can finally be at peace. All of us now could have access to this peace. Not the Pax Romana that was swirling around these societies at the moment, but a peace that the world cannot give. And note that the shepherds make haste to Bethlehem to see these things. They make haste. They want to go and see for themselves. They found Mary and found her most chaste spouse, Joseph, and the infant, as the angels had said, and they beheld the mystery, as we described last night in Midnight Mass, drawing to themselves this little babe. Perhaps they even picked him up at one point and brought him close to their hearts. And they went away, I can assure you, my dear sisters, they went away happy men. But a kind of happiness that is rarely seen in this world. It was a type of peace that made them, enthralled them into renouncing desires to have a higher rank for all those past years. They were so content with being nobodies on the side of a hill for 40 years, being piece of the furniture on the hill. They were content, thoroughly content to have been chosen to be a nobody. Something that night happened where their hearts were melting in absolute joy. They were abundantly content with doing without, having been kicked out of the synagogues, having been homeless, shelterless, under the sun or the night, the cool nights, without having a family to be accepted into and to form for theirs their own. Having to watch their flocks for long, cold winter nights for years and years, night after night, year after year. Apparent, get this, wasting of time with a bunch of animals. And we were, we were to sit them down, each one, and speak to them 
heart to heart, they would absolutely amaze us how they would be content with accepting that fate that they had and suffered all those years. Just to have that one night when our hearts met heaven, they would not trade that night in Bethlehem with any other experience for all the sundry times, places, and honors. And they became the talk of the town. Could you imagine the people of Bethlehem? They saw something was up and they knew something was extraordinary that happened that evening. Because these men were very stable. They were very predicted. They could predict them a mile away. They're silent. They don't talk much. They get up, walk around, go back to the hill. Night after night, week after week, month after month, year after year. And the people of Bethlehem didn't even know what their voices sounded like. And then all of a sudden, all aglow with talkativeness, but from a different realm. Not the giddy stuff, you know, <laughs> that teenagers do. But rather, this talkative of, of an apostle speaking about what they saw. And the people were convinced and they were amazed, says the scriptures. If these were scoundrels and Pharisees, they probably would not believe them. But these were just simple folk, predictable for so many years. They can guess them a mile away. So therefore, my dear sisters, I don't know what this message entails for us. But just know that these ordinary men, calloused men, or all of a sudden, all aglow with some sort of knowledge. And so therefore, as we continue this holy sacrifice of the Mass, let us continue to pound on de heaven's door to ask the angels to grant us little crumbs that may fall from the Heavenly Father's table that we too can understand and we too can be witnesses of such extraordinary events. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.